Shalom. So dear friends in European Alliance, dear friends of MIF, it's a great joy for me to be here and speak to you. Uh, and after all this bleak news we heard earlier today, I now offer you some good news. There is a way to grow pro-Israel forces in Europe. There is a way to come together and build and unite. And since I speak in English today, it's, um, I signify that it is, this is mostly for our European guests. But we saw yesterday how many MIF members who were here for the first time. Could you again raise your hand? You see, all these people are for the first time. <laughs> for the first time, you are in the national conference of MIF. And we have had conferences like this for years, so now thousands of people are not only members, but they, they um, really put their heart and their money into it. So together today, we take the first step of implementing the first point in the European Alliance of Israel's strategy, which is, and I quote, by exchange, coordination and education EIA seeks to inspire, strengthen, and professionalize the national work of the membership organizations to make them a more clear and stronger voice within their own country and language group. Please look at this photo with me for a moment. Anybody remembers it? It's not far away, it's less than two years ago. It's less than 14 kilometers away when we all were gathered outside the Norwegian parliament. And when I'm reminded of this rally we had, I trust many of you get the same feelings like I do. First of all, it was a big relief. Why? It was a big relief, relief because the same street in Oslo looked like this five years earlier. During the Oslo Intifada, during the anti-Jewish riots of January 2009, property for tens of millions Norwegian kroner were destroyed in the Oslo city center. Friends of Israel were beaten in the streets. McDonald McDonald's were attacked because someone spread the rumor that they, they are supporting Israel. The meeting hall of the Freemasons were purposely attacked. These dangerous agents of Zionism, according to the Hamas charter. And in the middle of it all, this threat to genocide of the Jewish people on the main street of Oslo flanked with the flags of the terror group Hezbollah. Now you understand better why 10th of August 2014 was such a big relief. Ignoring the threats and intimidation, around 500 members of MIF declared that it is correct and important of Israel to defend its citizens. We were saying no to the terrorism and the Islamism of Hamas that destroys the life of the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. That month, in less than a month, MIF got more than 1,000 members. Yep. So, so today I'm telling you the story about uh, Me Israel for Fred. The meaning is with Israel for peace. And, but we usually uh, uh, make it short. We call it MIF. And as we have grown and increased in strength, the anti-Zionist forces in Norway has been increasingly miffed by us. Increasingly annoyed. <laughs> so Zionists 
Zionists in Norway, they are myth, and anti-Zionist Zionists, they are miffed. Okay, putting aside the play on words, MIF was started as a group in 1975. All from the beginning, publishing information was uh, the core part of the work. At that time, paper and snail mail carried the words. In 1978, the organization was formally established as a membership organization, and lectures and meetings in local branches were added to the way MIF reached out to people. And We are happy to have here today the founder of MIF, Jan Benjamin Rödner, who introduced me. And he is still now, almost 40 years later, um, a member of the board. And Rödner and his colleagues gave MIF a flying start. Within eight years, the organization grew to around 1,800 members. And to understand the achievement, I have to point out that Norway had a population of the time of 4.2 million. If an equivalent number of Zionists had organized themselves in France at the time, the organization would have almost 24,000 members or 32,000 mem members in Germany. And I think most of the membership organization of the European Alliance would envy those numbers. And you also see here the, first, the very first leaflet that MIF produced in 1975. And even from the beginning, we communicate this hope for peace, a real peace where a Jewish state can thrive. But somehow the organization's growth stopped. For the first time in 18 years, the number of members dropped uh, below 1,000 in year 2000. And this is not the time to fully analyze why this happened. There are several reasons. One is that in the 80s and early 90s, other pro-Israel organizations were started. And Friends of Israel put their money and their heart into those. And, and in fact, MIF was... Uh, part in starting maybe one of the main actors at that time, Help Jews Home, which is still uh, a, a very uh, important um, actor and we are proud to be part of it uh, still. But there was also another reason. The Middle East came close to Norway with the Oslo process. And when I read the the records of the General Assembly of MIF in 1994, some people said, what? why should we have a MIF? Now the Jewish state is accepted. Is there a need for an organization uh, stepping up to defend Israel? Now peace is on the horizon. And when Israelis look back to the 1990s, Many of them admit to their naivety at the time, and there, there was some naive people even in Norway. But luckily, MIF's work was not stopped. And stopping the work has never been an issue since. But we didn't invite you to come from faraway countries to show you this graph. We invited you to show you this one. Since year 2000, there has been a steady increase in MIF's membership with an especially rapid growth since 2007. Uh, yeah, and as we heard, we, we passed 10,000 the 4th of March this year. And two weeks later, we had passed 2,100. Okay, so today MIF has, Norway has about 5.2 million. And so one out of 500 Norwegians are members of MIF. And, <clears throat> and, and, and in counties, in certain counties of Norway, we have more members than others. If you walk the streets of Kristiansand, which is the most southern city, every one of 200 people you meet in the shopping center, they are members of MIF.
So let me stop to mention here uh, the local leader in Kristiansand, Gabriel Edlan. Are you here, Gabriel? Please raise. Rise up. I, <clears throat> I cannot think of anyone doing a more faithful, non-paid job year after year after year for MIF and for Israel. And in a minute, I will speak about success factors of MIF, and Gabriel is certainly one that deserves his own separate chapter. But before I continue, just to show you that MIF is not just a list of names. MIF is an organization where people put their heart and their money into. So this is the development of MIF's revenue for the last almost 40 years. And you see, uh, ac along with the growth in membership, the, the income from the annual fee, and even more the income from the voluntary gifts, as we stepped our and professionalized our work, people also gave much more than the annual fee uh, in, con uh, in contributions. This year, MIF has a budget of close to 770,000 euros. So it goes without saying that we don't, we don't receive any government support. The whole effort is built on generous members. To give you a sense of where we are today, I, I took the liberty to uh, scale MIF in relation to the Norway's population into the population of some other countries represented here. So if MIF was scaled into Sweden, our uh, sister organization in Sweden would have almost 19,000 members. So I hope this table serves as an inspiration, not as a discouragement. <laughs> after, all, after all, Norway is not as different as you may think. We are not so strange. What have been done here can be done in your country. And the question of, yes, right, you can, you can applaud that. What can be done? <laughs> so, the, so the question our friends in Sweden and also in other countries have started to ask is, how did MIF get here? And I will now point out seven factors that I see as uh, very important. And I will try to present them in a timely order. So starting with those I see that were first uh, present within the organization. Firstly, ever since Jan Benjamin and his colleagues, the other, the other founders, uh, started, they made sure that MIF had a clear and focused purpose. MIF's goal has been and is to share information to create more sympathy for Israel and the Jewish people. Otherwise, our political platform is simply these four points. MIF supports the right of the Jewish people to a national homeland. MIF supports a solution to the refugee problems that is no threat to Israel. MIF thinks the conflict should be solved in direct negotiations with the parties. MIF rejects organizations that do not want to recognize Israel. So if you agree with all of this, if you agree that there is a need for uh, information from the Israeli perspective in Norway, you can be a member of MIF. And because we don't put more points in there, that's the reason why we can have such a great alliance of all different kinds of friends of Israel. In October, I had a, gave a lecture in our local branch in Drammen, 30 kilometers from here. And he came, and the youngest participant came to greet me, and he said, hello, two weeks ago, I, I joined MIF. I signed up as a member. I'm a Muslim. I'm, I'm, I'm a Kurdish Muslim. It was great to meet him. And anyone, anyone who supports our purpose is welcome, and we don't ask any other questions. And I'm very glad 
that most of these points were adopted when we made the mission statement for European Alliance for Israel in Brussels two years ago. The second success factor is, is a bundle of three, really. And they were there from the beginning. But I can mostly speak from uh, the last 20 years. First of all, MIF elders have been so faithful. Six of the ten national board members and deputies have engagement and responsibilities for MIF going back to the 90s. Some of them to the 80s and Jan Benjamin even to the 70s. And their long service for the cause of Israel gives, give, gives MIF a tremendous organi organizational uh, history, experience and wisdom. As we grow older, some of uh, us become more averse to take risk, but not so with MIF and its board members. <laughs> Bjarne, yeah, I think I think Bjarne Schirmer, he was the he was he was a, a member of the board in 1996. I think he was a bit skeptical when my uncle Odd, uh, who became the editor of the newspaper two years earlier, suggested that his young nephew of 16 years old could do the layout of the newspaper. And when I look at this front page, um, that is uh, 20 years old. I'm, I'm amazed that they actually took the risk of using me. You know, but I'm also so thankful. <laughs> I'm so uh, filled with thankfulness to MIF that they gave me the chance and they patiently, they waited for me to learn along the way and I, uh, it's been a great journey. So, uh, as we heard, I started to work full-time for MIF in 2007 after, filling, after finishing a bachelor degree in Internet Studies in Australia. So I came back home fueled with the, with the gospel of networked and uh, virtual organizations. I honestly believed at the time that having local branches inviting to meetings in, uh, uh, in a dark and uh, rural meeting hall it was a time of the old, this will die, die away, but not so. Since then, since 2007, MIF has grown in local branches from 5 to 27. And that is because we have these committed and skilled local leaders. <clears throat> That's... <clears throat> that step up to the work month after month after month. Success factor number three is the wise information strategy of MIF. If the membership of MIF should be based on you agreeing to me, or to Jan Benjamin, or to Morten, or to anyone else in the leadership, uh, there wouldn't be many members of MIF. <laughs> because it's not about agreeing to the, to the uh, ideas of the leadership. That maybe the main factor uh, that stopped MIF's drop in membership in the 1990s was that my uncle Odd became editor of the newspaper in 1994. And he decided from the beginning not to use MIF as a microphone for his own opinions and ideas. He made it uh, on purpose. He decided he wants to share the Israelis' perspectives bring the voices from the Israeli public and, and keeping his own ideas mostly to himself. Of course, at the same time, being faithful to the purpose of supporting a Jewish state, that we, that we should never come away from. But mainly bringing the Israeli perspect perspectives. So, um, and, and this information policy strategy was formally adopted by MIF's General Assembly in year 2000. And you, and you see, from, it was from year 2000 when we all agreed about this that the growth really took off. So let me spell out how this information strategy sometimes works. For example, when Ariel Sharon pulls all his soldiers and all the settlers out of the Gaza Strip, 
Some friends of Israel um, thought that Mephes no betray the cause of Israel because we gave the arguments that the Knesset majority used to do the pullback. It wasn't that we, that we were in, at the time also reporting about the opposition's arguments. But because, yeah, we strive to, br to bring the most important points from the internal Israeli discussions. And we are very happy that we ourselves don't need to take the difficult and often painful decisions that the Israeli people need to take. Other times, when uh, MIF has used strong words to arrest organization demonizing Israel, and when we fact-check journalists, um, some friends of Israel uh, to the left side, or those who favor soft speaking at all times, they may think that we are too one-eyed in our approach, that we should be more critical to the right-wing Israeli government policies, that we should bring the Palestinian narrative more often, etc., etc. Over time, however, honest people see that we only, the job we are doing is only following our purpose and our information strategy. We do not have any other agenda than supporting the right of the Jewish people to their homeland and communicating the perspectives of the Israeli public, however complex, shifting and nuanced it may be. Some of my best days as director of MIF is when I receive praise for the same work we are doing, for the exact same work we are doing from people that I know support left-wing causes in Israel and right-wing causes in Israel. <laughs> and, they, and they all praise me for the things we are doing. Then I know that we are uh, doing the right thing. In fact, one of my best days at work was the day when this photo was shot, May 2014. Here are MIF members welcoming, in, welcoming Israel's president, Shimon Peres, outside the royal castle. Here you have Christian Zionists of different shapes and convictions. You have a lifelong member of the Norwegian Labour Party. You have, a, you have an employee of one of the Norwegian right-wing government parties. You have two Kurds, probably belonging to two, two different parties. Uh, there, was, there was no way all these could happily uh, unite as members of MIF unless we stayed faithful to our non-partisan and non-religious profile. You can applaud that. So, so one, one part of this wise information strategy of MIF is that we don't take sides in the issues where there are deep divisions and strife within the Israeli society. Another important factor has been the way we, are, we bring the Israeli arguments to the Norwegian public. For example, um, giving the information about Jewish history in the Arab countries and how they were expelled in the 40s and 50s and 60s. And that this could all be a, an, an a lecture in itself. But in this way, MIF has won trust and acclaim because we stress, the, the, we, we stress reasonable arguments from the Israeli side. And we, don't, we try not to use those, the arguments that are speculative or hysteric or only wishful thinking. So <clears throat> next, after the new... Newspaper editor, the other factor that stopped MIF's downward trend in the 1990s is that we had a very early online presence ever since uh, 1996. So this website of ours is the first fourth success factor. And since the year of 2001, we have had daily updates. And now, 
15 years later, we have 22,000 articles freely available for any student, for any journalist, for any friend or enemy of Israel um, to uh, read and to discuss, because they, can, they are all free to comment and criticize. This is how the front page of our website looked Wednesday evening. So three of the top articles had been published that very day by our uh, new newspaper editor, Torbjörn Norgård. Uh, and, and on a normal day, when, when uh, we weren't busy preparing for a conference and, and people were not on holidays and things like that, there would be even more articles. But, but these topics that we have here, they are typical. We have this first item is taken from the Palestinian Media Watch. For years, we have used uh, the material uh, that Itamar presented yesterday. And the other, the second one to the right, it's a commentary by Torbjörn uh, against the Norwegian popular rap band that used the word Jew and attacked former Prime Minister Ariel Sharon in a very offensive way. And finally, you see a news article of but, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu officially admitting that Israel had stopped convoys of weapons heading for Hezbollah. But note that we actively promote uh, to sign up as member on our website. Before the first meeting in European Alliance for Israel, I checked the websites of the organizations in the different countries, and I was saddened, to be honest. Some of them don't have websites, and many, many lack the simple online registration form. I estimated that more than 90% of MIF's new members the last 15 years have come through clicking Limet, let me MIF, become a member of MIF and joining. If you don't have an online registration form, I can tell you why you don't have many members. It's because you don't have an online registration form. <laughs> this graph illustrates the growth of visits on our website since 2001, e each quarter of a year. And you see uh, the, w the number of visits peaks in, in times of intense conflict. But then within a few years, uh, the peak has turned to become the new normal. But there is even a better story than this graph. Uh, shows, and that is that we now, re through Facebook, we reach many more than, than uh, only through the website, and we will come back to that in a minute. We stop now with success factor number five, which is a professional staff. And even when, we, even when MIF had all the other success factors I just mentioned in, in place, and even if we grew from to 1,600 members until 2007. There was a cl clear turning point in the growth trajectory when MIF decided to give one person opportunity to use his best hours of the day to work dedicated for the cause. So this table shows you some of the changes. And but when I look back into, into the re old records of MIF, I see the same pattern in the 1980s. It was short periods of time when MIF gave a person uh, opportunity to work 50% uh, paid work and put all his, his or her efforts into it, that uh, growth came about. The second last success factor is MIF's hairy goals. A big hairy goal, according to Wikipedia, is a strategic business statement similar to a vision statement which is created to focus an organization on a single, medium, long-term organizational wide goal, which is audacious, likely to be externally questionable, but not internally regarded as impossible. 
And before last year's General Assembly, this all turned out like I was busy preparing a lecture with the title Myths Way to 10,000. And then John Benjamin stopped me and he said, 10,000 is not a goal anymore. Let's double it. Let's set 18,000 as a new goal. So that is our current hairy goal. To double, the, to double the number of members, even if you have five members or 100 members or 10,000 members, it takes the same growth rate to double. And it is, uh, if you want to double your organization in 10 years, you have to grow by 7.2% every year. These, these last 10 months since last General Assembly, MIF has grown with 12%. And if we could only, so, so if we could only uh, continue this uh, speed of growth for the next five years, we will celebrate 18,000 together in the General Assembly of 2001, 2021. <laughs> and in fact, MIF's, MIF's average annual growth from 2007 to 2015 was 24.6%. And setting 18,000 as a goal is audacious, but it's, it is not impossible. And we, if you were in the General Assembly last year, you remember that I used a lot of time to, to uh, convince you that that was the truth. And this is the same uh, numbers I showed you last year. Uh, that we're more than half a million of the adult uh, Norwegian population says uh, that the state of Israel deserves a special support. And, uh, and after the Arab Spring, after the Arab Spring was exposed as an Islamic deadly winter, after Brussels, after Paris, after Copenhagen, after Brussels again, and many more attacks, I think the number that's in Norway that see Israel deserving special support have increased since this last survey. MIF has, not at all, MIF has not at all reached the ceiling. And your national organization, whether it's in Austria or France or anywhere, haven't reached the ceiling either. There is another reason why we have great hope to continue the growth. Now, for the first time, we, have, we know the ages of the great majority of our members. And you could analyze this in great detail, but I just want to point out that MIF has more members in their late 30s than in their late 80s. And this graph proves it. And I showed this graph to uh, one uh, coach of mine who works with fundraising in, in uh, mostly for missions where Christian missions work. Uh, and the, the only answer he gave me on email was, lucky guy. Because it, it, may, it, it may seem, one journalist asked me today, isn't, it, isn't MIF an old organization? Your average age is 60. But if you ask a political party in Norway, what's your average age? Or even if you ask um, uh, about the average age of other old, f as old-fashioned uh, organizations like supporting Israel, uh, you will have um, many. You will have many will have a much higher average age. And supporting Israel is not old-fashioned. Of course, I hope you understood the irony. And the good news is that our new members, they are even younger. This is the same uh, graph showing uh, the, new, the age of the new members we got since May last year. And the average age is 55. In the last few years, MIF has stepped up our work directly aimed at teenagers and young adults. Whenever we are, and whenever we are invited by... Um, Student groups or school teachers, we go to give lectures and participate in debates. MIF's local branch in Kristiansand has organized a weekend for young people from across the country, both in 2014 and 2015. I think you will recognize some of the people who are here this weekend. 
in the photo. And this coming June, Morten and uh, my colleague Shetil in the back, uh, they will head MIF's first trips for young first trip for young people to Israel. And so so they many people sent us applications so we could we had the we had the luck of being able to hand pick those who we regarded as talented and useful uh, that they can be uh, good ambassadors for Israel when they return back home. And in reaching out to young people MIF has the last couple of years appreciated the cooperation with the Israeli organization called Stand With Us. So this photo from last year is when we had two, two times two uh, young ambassadors from is Israel visiting our local branches. They are in the front row from the left. I come now to the last of seven success factors and it's the way MIF works. Uh, and I will limit myself to only mention seven examples. Uh, and I, I promise you, Elvis is not there in every promotion we do. <laughs> but the first thing is never to forget who makes the heart of the organization beat. It is not the big names. It is not the clever tactics. It is not the professional staff, it is the members. And ever since 1978, MIF has given value for money to those who pay their annual membership fee. First of all, from the beginning, by distributing to them our newspaper. And nowadays, in addition, we send fundraising, fundraising letters with news and projects. We send email. Lately, we have started to use SMS. And in addition, we have all the local branches and other websites and social media that we will discuss in separate chapters. All from, all from the beginning, MIF was about this strengthening our own members' knowledge and commitment to Israel. Jan Benjamin wrote, this already in 1980, many people are friends of Israel based on a shaky ground. They feel uncertain and uncomfortable about their support when Israel is criticized. It is not easy to defend Israel, they say. MIF's task is to remove that uncertainty. Speaking for... <clears throat> so, speaking for me personally, if I only uh, had the the picture of Israel that the mainstream media in Norway portrays and that the NGOs in Norway portrays, I couldn't, with a good conscience, be a friend of Israel. But MIF corrects, expands, and brings historical depth to the picture and make me extremely comfortable in supporting the Jewish state unashamedly. The second example I will point out is how MIF do fundraising or, and how, how we do not do it. In my time in MIF, I think you can count on one hand the number of times we have, sent, we have made a special letter sending to a rich person to, to ask for general support or for a special project. We simply do not waste our time doing that. We do not waste our time searching for big sponsors. So what do we do? Every January we send a letter for the annual fee. And then we tell our members, if you raise the, uh, the payment you do till, to the level of 700, you will be, you will be uh, able to participate in the draw of a travel gift card with a value of 10,000 kroner. So many hundreds of people raise even already in the first month of the year, they raise uh, the, the fee they pay from above the, the given price. And several times a year, they give similar letters where we ask for support. Here you see the top of the letter 
which gave us the best results in recent years. It was sent in August 2014, and it basically says the following. Now, MIF has run ad campaigns in all the biggest newspapers of Norway. Now, MIF, in the last weeks when Israel has been in war with Hamas, we have reached more than 700,000 people on Facebook each week. Now, MIF leaders have been personally MIF leaders have personally paid a tough price receiving threats for standing up for Israel during the war. Now you can help us to pay the bills for the ads. And this letter was sent on an invoice. I, I don't know best to exp express it in, in, uh, in English, but in Norway I would call it an invoice paper. Uh, so that even those who don't use net banking, they can go to the post office or the bank and, and hand it in. It, we don't send a letter only with the bank account number. It has to be easy for people to make use of, of uh, or, or to give. Do you, know, do you want to know the result of the letter? It was sent to 7,519 addresses. The great majority did not respond. But 1,600 did, and they gave, gave an average 522 kroner. So the return of the investment was 18. We were willing to sacrifice uh, one euro sending the letter to our members, but we gave, even, even if, even, even when uh, almost 80% did not respond. We got 18 euros in return for every euro we, we spent sending the fundraising letter. Would you be willing to do that investment? So this is maybe the best advice I can give to your organizations. If you do not send fundraising letters to your grassroots, uh, give it a try. And, but do not be discouraged when 85% do not respond. It is those 15% who that month had the ability to put something into the work. Next month or next year, some others may answer. So it's, it's doing this work over time that will gradually uh, increase uh, not only uh, your bank account, but what you can put into pro-Israel work. But MIF is not about preaching to the converted. MIF wants to reach everyone. So that's why we embraced internet already in 1996. That's why we have embraced Facebook for the last many years. But we, but we still, believe it or not, uh, operate a little in the sphere of paper. Since 2010, MIF has distributed a special 24 pages magazine to letterboxes in 15 of 19 counties of Norway. And the four counties we haven't reached yet this far, they are the four of the five counties that have the less population of Norway. But we will come to them for sure. Someday, in 2008 or in 2009, MIF will be able to boast that we have covered the whole of Norway with Israel's best arguments. Uh, that's those letterboxes who are not uh, blocked from promotion, that is. So... I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that we will seem to be able to finish this before the letterboxes all disappear. <laughs> we come now to the number four example of how MIF works. We publish books. To the left, you see the book we published in 2008. This was my first big project when I started full-time. Uh, celebrating Israel's 60 years. And to the right, you see the books we have published since 2012. Four of the books are part of a series. And in the end, we hope that everyone will feel that they need every book in the series. Because otherwise, they won't have this wonderful logo in their bookshelves. <laughs> so, 
So, <laughs> so uh, bookshelves, by the way. For some, it may seem like a remedy of the last century. Anyway, uh, but MIF is also in this century. The last few months, MIF has started to use SMS for even for fundraising. And I mentioned one example yesterday, how we got... Yes, Friday morning we sent an SMS and in the first 11 minutes we got 40,000 in contributions. In the first 11... And, and, and I'll give you another example uh, from, this, from uh, New Year's Eve, 31st of December. This is, was, was the text, Happy New Year. In 2016, MIF is going to coach talented young people to defend Israel's case. Give 300 kroner to support the work by answering using the code MIFUNG22160 now. The result was 144 transactions, 43,000 kroner. And, and, and this weekend you see how we use these, this money. Many of the young people, some of the young people who are here, they, are, they have been sponsored to be here. And what, how can, why can we do it? It's not because anyone in the leadership uh, is, is clever. It's because we have 144 members who were willing on New Year's Eve to open their, uh, their pockets to do it. And, and those are the ones that uh, deserve the applause. And now we come to the, maybe the um, single, single greatest success factor of later years. If you are afraid that you will lose the sightseeing, do not be afraid. I will also go there. So the bus is waiting for us. But I have to rush, I see. So you will... Um, you, you see here the numbers of MIF act activity on Facebook. So we have 25,000 likes on our main page. And for you to understand how this compares into the Norwegian political uh, world, look how we compare to the uh, left-wing party with um, is it eight or ten members of parliament, how we compare to the biggest worker association in Norway that actually uh, supports full boycott of Israel. It's, so let's start, continue to build our numbers that they will forever be less than us. They have, in, by the way, 11, this is to show you Europeans what uh, climate we operate in. The, they organize 11% of the Norwegian workforce and their General Assembly voted overwhelmingly to adopt full boycott of Israel. This is the, uh, these are the two biggest uh, Christian daily newspapers and, and this is our dear friends in the Palestina Committee. Um, that both in real members and in Facebook likes we are happy to have them where they are. <laughs> so this is, this is maybe one of the best statistics uh, I show you today. It, it illust and it illustrates, I believe, how MIF managed to change the debate during the last Gaza war. These are the numbers from, that Facebook gives me. Uh, how we reached, within one week, 763,000 people on Facebook. And more than 82,000 engaged themselves by clicking like, commenting, sharing, etc. And this is only the numbers for MIF's own page. Imagine the combined reach when you all guys shared and commented. That is not even mentioned here, measured here. So I wish there was time to show you more examples of how MIF works on Facebook, but there is not enough time. The, your reach is dependent on how, what you post, how you post, when you post it, but also how much you boost your posting by paying Facebook to, to, to get the big reach. The seventh example of how MIF works is that we do not go in hiding when Israel is under attack. We don't go on holidays. Right, we try to limit our holidays as much as possible. Uh, I hope and 
I opened the lecture by showing you the numbers who turned up to the pro-Israel rally in August 2014. During the same war, as I mentioned, we put full, ad, full, ad, full pages ads in the biggest newspapers. Uh, we were interviewed on national TV, radio, newspapers several times. Our media watch articles uh, were extensively quoted and commented in the debate. And it was hard for, it is extremely difficult for the mainstream media to ignore uh, what is going on when, when uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, talk about it and put pressure on them. One main line of defense for Israel, as most of you know, is to demand that the Jewish state is criticized and judged after the same standard as other countries. During the war, I was invited to the biggest news program of the Norwegian National Broadcaster. Did Israel violate the rules of war when they bombed the houses of Hamas leaders, they asked me. I answered, did Norway violate the laws of war when we bombed the houses of the Gaddafi regime three years ago? We did not hear that accusation <laughs> anymore during that war. So it's, it's impossible to sum up years of work in a one-hour lecture. There are so many other things Mif Duen has done. Some of them are on the screen. We have the local meetings. Uh, with, the, with the lobbying, with the lobbying of high-ranked officials and politicians, it is like these uh, letters to special rich people. We were very rarely do it. My philosophy has been to pick the lowest hanging fruits first, build from the grassroots, and politicians will take note when people rally around the cause. Like, like it was proven this weekend. And increasingly, MIF is respected as an actor in the political debate. And we give people the tools to do lobbying themselves. We give them the knowledge. Like one lady had to leave uh, this morning, but she took uh, the report uh, that, we, that we published yesterday about uh, hate education in the Palestinian society. Her next commitment today was going to a political meeting where she sat close to uh, the head of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the Storting. So that is now read by her already today. Not by, not by uh, us forcing someone to do it, but because she had the tools and she, and she, and she got that opportunity. And we heard about the visit in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on Friday. And um, yeah, if you have finished reading this slide while I was talking, you have seen that me from time to time also uses other social media than Facebook. So we come now to my conclusions. People support me because they see that our work does a difference. When high school graduates were given a terrible anti-Israel exam two years ago, MIF's protest reached hundreds of thousands within a few days. When an Israeli film was boycotted by a Norwegian film festival in February, MIF showed a full that filled the whole cinema in Oslo that same month with almost 200 people to make sure that the film was uh, shown in Norway. MIF's work has an impact. We cannot receive, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you some good news, and we cannot receive the honor for ourselves, for all of it. But, but we do not think that all what I'm going to show you was going to happen if the Friends of Israel just sank back in their sofas and avoided to stand up for the truth. In spite of all the talk about boycott, import from Israel to Norway is growing year by year. Less than two years ago, Norway's Prime Minister declared that she wants to see increased economic and cultural relations between Norway and Israel. During the state visit of President Shimon Peres, His Majesty King Harald of Norway shared the people of Israel in the royal castle in front of the whole Norwegian government and 200 guests. Hatikwa was played both outside and inside the royal castle. Jerusalem of gold, 
of all songs was played from the bell tower of the Oslo municipality building. Yesterday we heard from Petroleum and Energy Minister Todd Lien about the great potential for future energy cooperation between Israel and Norway. These are tunes we haven't heard from all Norwegian governments in the past, to put it that way. And we love to poke fun with the Swedes. So the Swedish government has recognized Palestine. But in Norway's parliament, 161 of 169 representatives rejected the proposal. <laughs> now, and this is my last slide, we are soon to leave for the sightseeing. Now why? MIF is already one of the lo uh, largest foreign affairs related interest groups in Norway and as far as we know we are the biggest non-political, non-religious membership organization in Europe. Why, why the desire to grow anymore? Remember, doubling the number of members is not a goal in itself. The best thing would be that there was no need for MIF, no need for a European alliance for Israel. The goal we work for is that one day, the goal we work for is that day when European nations understand the necessity and the moral imperative of Israel existing as a Jewish state. It will be the day when there is broad consensus both in Norway and in Europe to develop close economic, political, cultural, and military connection to Israel. Until that day, we will work with ever-increasing strength to get there. MIF and EIA and all the other organizations represented there today are only the tools we use to get to that day. We support Israel, not to make ourselves feel good or blessed or anything else. We support Israel because the state has restored the hope and secured the life and future for the Jewish people after they experience their history's greatest tragedy. <clears throat> Anti-Semites understand the importance of Israel to Jewish life. The anti-Semites anti do understand it. That's why they are modern anti-Semites are also anti-Zionists. We also understand how important Israel is for the Jewish people. That's why we are Zionists. That's why we are members of MIF. That's why you have traveled from far across Europe to be inspired and build network this weekend. You have done the right thing. You fight for a just cause. Even if Israel's neighbors don't give her peace in our lifetime, in our children's lifetime, the re-establishment of a Jewish state in the historic homeland of the Jewish people has been the exact right thing to do. Let me end on a positive note. We stand now in front of a year of festivities where there is so much to celebrate. June 2017, 50 years since the liberation of the Western world, since Israel proved military power capable to secure the state for generations to come. August 2007, 120 years since the first Zionist Congress. November 2017, 100 years since the Balfour Declaration. Again, November 2017, 70 years since UN Gen Ge UN's, Ge UN's General Assembly voted to establish a Jewish state. Let's start the celebration together this weekend. And let us go back to our towns in Norway, to our organizations in Europe, to, con con to continue to celebrate the wonder of Israel. Thank you.